Typically, 90% of heroin users become re-addicted once they return home from rehab because their environment didn't change and they weren't taught the strategies to cope with handling the old cues and cravings. I have I have seen this firsthand myself with uh, drug use and addictions uh, in people and rehabilitation homes being so useful for a lot of people to uh, detox, quote unquote, from the destructive environment, but the destructive drug that is maybe destroying their life, relationships, and health, okay? And the one thing that rings so true is that if nothing changes, nothing changes. You didn't fix the root cause of the problem by moving away from it. You just... You almost put a bit of a band-aid on it. You just kind of tricked yourself into, oh, things are okay now. But if you go back into that same environment, let's say your home environment, your social group is one that is very triggering for destructive habits, whatever it may be. It could be addictions like drugs, could be anything. You go back into that environment, even after a little bit of a multi-month hiatus where you've been really good and you're really good to yourself, you've noticed all these uh, habits improve. Wow, I feel great. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. You go back into that environment, relapse is a high likelihood just a matter of time because those cues in your environment are still there triggering you and you one only has so much willpower and discipline to exert over themselves to constantly manage the environment that is triggering their relapse type behavior or addictive type behavior you might be good the first, the second, the third time with a cue. All right, breathe, all right. I know it's a bit of a, str- a lot of things is stress for people. Like stress can be a big trigger for people, but you haven't changed your environment to actually uh, be less stressful, nor have you developed the tools and resources to manage stress when you go in stressful environments. So, all right, you try your best. All right, breathe, just do your thing. All right, second time. All right, God damn it, this is really annoying me. Third time, ah, fuck it. Screw it. I'm just going to... You go out. You snap. You're back to smoking. You're back to drugs. You're back to sex addiction. You're back to whatever addiction, poor behavior, poor eating that you previously tried to address. But you tried, but you, you worked hard, but you didn't work smart. And this is the thing with rehab homes. And you know some do great jobs with them and some do not. Some do not actually give people the tools and resources. Great, you talk therapy, you have your environment where you're, you're not allowed to do certain behaviors. You're, you're very structured and regulated. There are clear consequences to uh, transgressing uh, and uh, it's not the re- it's not a reflection of the real world. It's like it's like high school or primary school or you know school is not a reflection of the normal workplace behavior generally speaking um, and real day to day life. And so you're not actually preparing the individual to handle the day to day stresses of life. They're not equipped with the tools. They don't know how the strategies. They don't know how to design the environment. In fact, if every rehab home came with a book of Atomic Habits by James Clear and actually or, or like they got to watch a video series like this that, that talked through all these concepts. Hmm, I wonder. I really, I really do wonder. They went through the strategies. They went through the, 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 the different concepts in this book. They put them into practice. Like, what if we had just worked smarter? Like, you're trying to abstain so hard with discipline and effort not to do the thing you want to do. What if you just change your environment? What if you just move all the food that's in the fridge and cupboard triggering that behavior, instead of it out being on the counter, you put it in the garage. 